Hi guys, and welcome to lesson 15. Today we're going to talk about covariance and correlation. Alright, so covariance tells us a way to, or it tells us how to measure one random variable against another. So um, if we have two random variables x and y, and we see a change in x, does that any, imply anything about uh, the outcome of y? Formally defined, the covariance between x and y is the expected value of x minus its mean times uh, y minus its mean. And if we work out the algebra here, so if we take um, this line, which is the definition of covariance that I just gave on the previous slide and FOIL it, uh, this is the expected value of xy minus x times e of y minus y times e of x plus e of x, e of y, and then using the linearity of expectation, we can break up the expected value over the differences and sums. So this is e of x, y minus e of x times e of y minus e of x times e of y plus e of x, e of y, and one of these is, will cancel. So the minus e of x, e of y plus e of x, e of y cancels, and we're left with e of x, y minus e of x, e of y. So uh, that's an alternate formula. We have two formulas for the covariance, uh, one being the one given in the definition, the other being this one, which is a lot of times easier to compute with, and it's just an algebraic derivation. So a uh, special case, what if we check the covariance of x with itself? Well, the covariance of x with x would be the expected value of x minus its mean squared. Right? So we multiply it by itself. And that was the definition of the variance of x. So the variance of a random variable is a special case of the covariance, and it's the covariance of the random variable with itself. So hopefully some of these formulas looked sort of familiar in the last couple of slides. Uh, the covariance of x with itself, if we use the alternate formula, is the expected value of x times x minus the expected value of x times the expected value of x, which is that e of x squared minus e of x squared formula um, for the variance of x. So uh, if you replace one of the x's with a y, you get the covariance between x and y. So let's look at what sort of properties um, the covariance has. If we have a constant a, and we look at the covariance of ax and y, well, applying that second formula that I gave you. It's e of ax times y minus e of ax times e of y. But a is a constant, so that pulls out of the expected values, meaning that I can pull it all the way out into the front. So it's a times e of xy minus e of x times e of y, which is a times the covariance of x and y. So that is a constant pulls out of the covariance. You could do the same thing if this constant was in the second coordinate. It would be the exact same computation just with ay instead of ax. And if we apply this rule to the variance, the variance of a times x, well, we already know what the answer should be, but it follows from the covariance formula. Uh, it's the covariance of ax with itself, and we can pull the a out of the first coordinate, giving us a times the covariance of x and ax, but we could also pull the a out of the second coordinate. And when we pull both a's out, we get a squared times the covariance of x with itself, which is a squared times the variance of x. So if you get comfortable with covariance, you can actually derive the rules really easily uh, about the variance of a random variable. And there, uh, that hopefully gives you some sense of why it's an a squared, or maybe helps you remember, um, because the a is coming out of two coordinates uh, from the covariance. Also, using that formula, um, the second formula that I gave you for the covariance, uh, the covariance of x with the sum y plus z is going to be e of x times y plus z minus e of x times e of y plus z. And uh, distributing the x, we can break up the sum to e of x and uh, x y, sorry, and uh, e of x z. So we get e of x y, and we'll have a plus an e of x z. But we're also going to have a minus e of x e of y and then a minus e of x, and then this will give us another e of z. 
And so the second line here is just a rearrangement of the terms. So we have e of x, y minus e of x, e of y plus e of x, z minus e of x, e of z. And those are, once again, just the formula for the covariances. So this is the covariance of x and y plus the covariance of x and z. If a is a constant, the covariance of x and a is going to be the expected value of ax minus the expected value of x times the expected value of a. But the expected value of a constant is just the constant. So this is a, and I can pull a constant out of an expected value. So factoring, we get a times e of x minus e of x, which is 0. That is, uh, if a is constant, then it doesn't change at all. So as x changes, a is not changing. Um, in other words, the two are not related. And since the two aren't related, it might give you a sense of, well, what if they're both random, but they're not related? So uh, if x and y are independent, then uh, the covariance of x and y, which is e of x y minus e of x times e of y, uh, is equal to, remember for independent random variables, e of x times y is e of x times e of y, and so therefore that's going to cancel this e of x times e of y, and that gives you zero. So independent random variables have zero covariance. Uh, I'll point this out more explicitly in class, but uh, if the covariance is zero, that does not mean that x and y are independent and that's going to be very important. So there's no units uh, on covariance, which sometimes makes it difficult to see what the number is really representing. Um, a covariance of 10 uh, could be a big covariance or a small covariance. So sometimes we scale the covariance to be between negative 1 and 1, and we call this the correlation. Um, so uh, 1 is a po perfect positive linear correlation, where a negative one is a perfect negative linear correlation. And zero just means that there's no linear relationship. So I talked about this before in class. Remember that uh, there's no linear relationship if they're independent, but there's also no linear relationship if uh, the data, if we looked at data points that were in the shape of a circle or something. So a circle isn't linear, but it's not independent either, because knowing something about x would tell us something about y. And the formula for co correlation, the way we scale it to be between minus 1 and 1, is we take the covariance of x and y and divide by the square root of the variance of x times the variance of the y. Uh, you could also just divide by the product of their standard deviations, because the square root of the variance is the standard deviation. And uh, this is the thing I was talking about earlier in class that measures the linear relationship of x and y. Uh, it's sort of similar to the information gain, which is something I covered in class one day, uh, so hopefully you remember something about information gain. Um, but information gain doesn't depend on a linear relationship, so I think it's a little bit more robust. But for this class, we're going to study uh, just the correlation. All right, well, that's all. I guess I'll see you guys in class.